Holy shit, I'm back on YouTube. You call me your baby when you hold in my hand. Hey guys, this is Howler Mouse, and uh, yeah, I figured I'd shoot a little video since I'm down here in town. Man, I was talking about going north a couple months ago, talked about going north in a few videos. Y'all come back up and do that stuff, and by going north, I've ended up uh, back in my hometown and stuff, right? This is Raven, Virginia. Now, I didn't live here, but it's really close to where I did grow up, a couple miles down the road. There's railroad tracks and stuff. And I figure, out, since I'm down here in my hometown, we'll take a look at a few places where I've talked about buying comics in all my videos and stuff when I start telling those stories. So there's the railroad tracks. This is Raven, Virginia, like I said. And right here at this building right here, down there on the far end, which will be your right, there's a blew my mind that's out of business. But when I was six years old in 1979, that is where the drugstore was that I bought my first comic. It was that Superboy and Legion of Superheroes, something like, I don't know, 255 or something. I don't know. I'll look it up later. But that's the place. That was it. And if you follow the road out right around the corner, they got a bunch of buildings there. There's nothing really worth looking at. There used to be a flea market down there that you go on every weekend, and it had tons of comic books. This is back when people just threw them in cardboard boxes, and you'd be walking around, you know, having to dig a little bit and stuff. So that's the first place, and uh, you know, it's kind of wild, man. Remember, you know, realizing that 1979, I was six years old, and I'm sitting here thinking about all that living that's gone on between then and now. You know, May to you know April 2016 and stuff, man. So yeah, shooting this video, I'm already kind of getting that little nostalgic feeling to remember and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off, man, because I guess I don't know who that guy is in the doorway. I don't know if you can see him, but he's starting to stare at me. Stare at me. Sitting in the doorway all day. All right, guys. We're going to go to the next place. Catch you later. Okay, guys, well, this, this, this is one of those stories I hope I can get kind of give you a good picture of what happened back in winter of either 85 or maybe early 86. Let's see where we're walking here because over there's town. Can't see the screen on my phone, so hopefully you can see it. But there used to be a pharmacy over there you get comic books. And way up there, if you follow the road and stuff, there's a set of apartments I lived in. And we would take a bridge that's over there, you know, to the mall and then like walk through town, you know, away over there to where those buildings are. And there's a pharmacy and I needed crisis on infinite earth number four. And the word on the street got back to me. They had one. So I was determined to get it. So in the middle of winter, a bunch of us, about four or five of us get together and we're going to go over there to town and get something to eat, hang out, look for girls, all that good stuff. You know, I'm like... 13 or 14 back then but it's so cold we decide we're going to take a shortcut and as you can see over there that is an airport and there's no trespassing over there and of course we always thought this was for like vandalism or something oh there's a bridge so uh so we go over here and we end up going straight from those buildings straight to where the airport is into that marsh if you can see it over there but we didn't know it was a marsh it wasn't no trespassing because they were scared of vandals or somebody still in a you know a little two-seater plane or something uh it's because when we got in there we found out in the dead of winter we're in the middle of a freaking swamp and as we get you know we went too far we had committed we went too far there was no turning back and we started sinking in it and the water was freezing cold and it was trying to suck our shoes off when people were falling. And here I am with a stack of comic books. And I can remember some of the comic books. I've gotten at Avengers somewhere in the 260s or something with Fire Lord on the cover. I had an Avengers with, uh, you know, uh, who was it? Immortus strangling Kong the Conqueror on it. It was Roy Thomas, Tom Palmer, John Bushima days back in the 80s. 
and one by one I was losing those comics, man. It was me or the comics. I was sinking in the swamp. I was losing my shoes. I was helping pull people out of it. I mean, it was actually quite epic, man. And by the time it was all over with, I had probably about eight comics. All I had was the Crisis on the Infinite Earths number four left. That was it. That's all that survived the freaking swamp, man. You know, you talk about, you know, a day of hell for a bunch of little teenage guys who actually bonded that day, freezing to death, you know, losing her shoes, muddy socks, just a freaking mess when we come out the other end, man. Good times. Good times. Alright. I've been out of town, moved away about 10 years ago, but I was only a town over about 30 minutes away, and then I really moved back in uh, 2009 and stuff. Somebody recognized me. And uh, it's getting kind of wild to see all these places tore down. There's already been one place I couldn't show you because it's gone. But here's another place that's out. This used to be a gas station. It's uh, Kent's Ridge Pharmacy, if you can see way down there. And uh, this was the place around 84, 85, and 86. They had uh, you know, a magazine stand in there, and they only had like four or five comics uh, titles they'd get a month. But this is where I got the Punisher miniseries back in the day, the one that Mike Zeck did, and I think a guy named Steve Grant might have wrote. But uh, you know, it was the first Punisher miniseries, man. And you know, it used to feel like quite a walk to get to town, and I just measured it in my car, and I don't even think it's really a mile. But you know, walking from the set of apartments I was up, it's probably about two and a half, three miles. So we stopped, I would always like hope that we would like end up on this road to go somewhere out of town so I could run in here. But there's quite a few times I'd go in here just walking with my buddies and stuff and make sure I got those because these little places like this would get comics that they didn't have in town. You know, I don't know how they ordered them back then or anything like that, but uh, you know, when there's a Punisher miniseries coming out in the 80s, and you know, you're 11 or 12, you know, you will do what you have to do to get your ass out and get it. So it's kind of weird seeing this. This is also one of those places that you would see people from the rich neighborhood. There's a road that goes up there and that's where all the rich people lived. And uh, the husbands would come down here and read Playboys all day, sneaking away from their wives. So it was kind of awkward to go in here and be like, excuse me, sir, I would like to, you know, look at comic books. Can you please step to the side with your Playboy? You know, kind of awkward. All right, guys, to the next place. And now we've hit some serious shit. This is the serious stuff, right? Don't let the pretty little brick buildings and this renovated place fool you, man. Back in the 70s and 80s, this was a Deskins, okay? Which was a grocery store. Red building, green top, you know, everybody came down here and all this stuff. And that little place that says Scotty's Pharmacy used to be right there on the very end of that place and it was tiny. And what I would do is you'd come down here to this place and way over there you see a magic mark. Okay, and this is where you got the most of your comics and stuff, right here in the middle of town. And it was a fight because this was it. A few people that were collecting comics in town would all rush down here on Wednesdays and stuff. And what was on the rack was what was on the rack. But I hit the mother load because I ended up moving behind this place uh, when I was in high school, man. And down there, you know, like where this white uh, house is, is where you'd get off the bus and you'd run your ass over here to Scotty's, right there when it was there, and you'd get your comics. This is also the place where I've told the stories about how uh, I came out of there one time uh, with a bunch of comic books and there was three guys who had followed me off the bus and had waited out here and they were like, oh, you collect comics, man, you know, ready to try to jump me and stuff, but there were so many grown-ups around, that's how I got away from them. But over here at Magic Mart, this goes back to the late 70s and stuff with my stepdad. That place had comic books in a spinner rack and a big magazine rack, and you would find comics, and if you didn't have enough money, you'd hide them with on the, the whole freak. They had like, I mean, it was just a whole aisle of magazines and books, and you would hide your uh, comics behind there. And, you know, if you took your time, you'd go through there and find other comics people would find. I'd find the Reader's Digest and stuff. But in the late 70s, probably like between 78 and 79, uh, you know, my stepdad and I were in there and stuff, and uh, we came out, and all of a sudden he wanted to go back where they threw the trash out, and we found a spinner rack. He found a spinner rack, and uh, they just thrown it out. They didn't even put it in the dumpster back then, and we took it in. He took it home, put it in his bedroom, and filled it full of Silver Age comics that were his collection. 
And that's where I would just spin the rack in the house and I'd pull X-Men number two, X-Men number three, read my Jack Kirby Fantastic Four back then, a shitload of Avengers and stuff, a few DC books, Justice League and everything like that on a spinner rack in the bedroom that they had thrown out. Now that Magic Mart also has some memories because if I remember right, they had a payphone in there and I'd bought a Batman comic and this was back when you got to vote if Jason Todd Robbins should die. You know, those great books where, uh, you know, Mike Mandola was doing the cover, Jim Starlin was drawing, Jim Apro was, uh, Jim Starlin was writing, Jim Apro was drawing them, and they asked you to vote. You had two numbers you could call. And believe it or not, I got on the payphone and I got through. And some, for some reason, the payphone gave my money back. I don't know if it was where it was an 800 number or an 88 number. I don't know what it was, but I know they charged. But somehow that payphone let me get through. And guess what I decided to do? I voted for Jason Todd to die, right? So yeah, a lot of memories, a lot of great comics in here, a lot of just, uh, you know, it's kind of wild that these two places are still around even though they moved and renovated and stuff, man. But like I said, when I moved uh, behind this building after years of walking to get down here and stuff and living all over town and having those days where, you know, you just wanted to get down here to actually move near the place was like the greatest thing in the world. Now. The other piece of history here that I've told, I've talked about Watchmen, and we know we love Watchmen. This is the very place where in 1988, right there under that street lamp, and it seems like the street lamps were different. I swear they seemed like they were turned into the parking lot instead of the main street. But this is where I went and got a bunch of comics. I can't remember what I traded. And right here, it looked like a drug deal going down because I walked up to the truck, the guy got out, and like I pulled out my comics, he took them, he handed me the Watchmen trade paperback which I still have and I walked away man and it was like dusk and just the yellow light was just making a cone over his truck and over us man it looked like it looked really shady man but this is where history happened this is where I finally got the watchman and could read it and uh just fell in love with it man man a lot of history here all right to the next place Okay, guys, this is another one of those places where uh, I've told y'all stories about the, the comics and all that stuff uh, from this building to this building right here. Uh, when I was 10 years old, my grandfather had passed away. This is where they were holding the funeral, and it got kind of heavy in there, so I went out, and this was a different time. I was like 10 years old, fifth grade, I think, so I'd be around 83 or so, and I came out of there just to get away from everybody, and it was a different time. Like I said, you could be a kid and walk around, and everybody didn't freak out, and just need to get away from everything. Thing was just too heavy and I was really sad and about my grandfather dying and stuff like that. So I walked from walked out that building and it was really odd because all of a sudden I had like, I just started walking and I jaywalked, like I owned the place. Went right over here and went to this building which has been renovated but it's pretty close. And this was a old malt shop called Helen's and Nancy's. I'd never been there. And what was really odd is I'd never really noticed the place. And I walk in and looking back on it, the lady saw me coming, the owned it, Helen. And she knew what was, you know, apparently she knew what was going on. I walked in and she had a milkshake waiting on me. And she just set me down and then I looked over and she had uh, rows and rows of uh, comic books on this bookshelf. And ended up buying Legion of Superheroes number 300 in there and just got really a lot of comfort. And the thing about Nancy was is that she had a real gravelly voice. And uh, come to find out she'd been robbed in here years before and the guy who robbed her had slit her throat and she lived. So I'd end up coming in here, uh, just talking to Helen as I grew up through the 80s and stuff, and just get a milkshake, and mom and my grandmother knew about it, and they, you know, let me come on down here. And looking back on it, I kind of think they made a few efforts to make sure I got to go in here. You know, I'd get my daredevils in here by Anacita and a few things over the years, and always get a milkshake and stuff, and Nancy was always glad to see me and stuff. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of comfort, you know, through comics. And, uh, you know, I've talked about this place a lot, man, but it's kind of the thing what I'm talking about. I got that, and then uh, I remember I, not only did I get Legion of Superheroes number 300, but I remember I got an Uncanny X-Men where Cyclops and Madeline Pryor are uh, on their honeymoon flying a plane. They land in the middle of the ocean, and Cyclops ends up fighting a giant octopus. Good times, good times.